Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend this time with me. I'm really excited about what the Lord has put on my heart to speak about today. Today we're going to talk about vital signs. Are you familiar with the vital signs? Well, the Lord has a lot to say about that. Vital signs are about living, so the Lord has a lot to say about living and how we can live in Him. But before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. You are the Alpha, you're the Omega, you're all that exists. Everything that we do, everything that we don't do is for you and for your glory. We give praise and honor and glory to your holy name for all the ways that you're working in our lives. And Lord, I thank you for bringing me and whoever is watching this video into this space right here, right now. And we ask that you heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. Teach us what it is that you would like us to know. Not my words, but your words, Lord. <clears throat> Not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you again for being here today. I'm really excited about this topic. Um, what inspired me to go over this is to uh, uh, show to you or help demonstrate to you another DBT skill uh, called vitals. And then it made me think about, you know, what are vitals and why are vitals important? So we can start off with the definition of vital signs. And I'm sure that many of you are familiar going to the doctor or going to the hospital and having your vital signs taken. Well, what is a vital sign? Well, the definition of a vital sign is a clinical measurement. It's a pulse where we measure our heart rate, our blood pressure, how well the blood is pumping throughout our body, our respiratory rate, how quickly or how slowly we're breathing, our temperature, we all know when we're sick, if we're really sick, often we will have an elevated temperature and there is a normal level that, um, we want our temperature to be. And so these are all indications of a person's essential bodily functions. It also tells us how well our organs are functioning. So I love to think about, you know, we, um, the Lord has reminded us that we are a spirit, we have a soul, and the soul is comprised of the mind, the will, and the emotions, and we live in a body. We have so much to take care of. And while we are living in a body, we need to take care of our bodily functions. So let's go over a little bit of how it is that we can really optimize our bodily functions. So obviously if we're ill, we do need to take care of ourselves and we may need to take some remedies, we may need to rest, we may need to go see a physician and um, take medication. But also, just like there are vital signs where we take a blood pressure or we take our pulse or we measure our respiratory rate, how fast we're breathing, we can also do a check of how we are feeling physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So I have some suggestions that I put together that I'd like to go over first. So first we're going to look at, are we in fight or flight or rest and digest? So fight or flight is when we're moving, 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 doing, doing, doing. And we're keep, you know, we're, we may be feeling stressed and we're just on the run, on the run, on the run. And very often when we're in fight or flight, our respiratory rate goes up and our blood pressure goes up and our pulse rate, our heart rate goes up. So often we want to pull ourselves back and be in rest and digest, be in the opposite of that. We're not created to be in fight or flight 24 seven. Maybe if there's an emergency, we do need to be in fight or flight. Or if we get some bad news, we do need to tend to that right away. But then we're asked to be in the opposite of that, rest and digest. Two different nervous systems. When we're in fight or flight, we're in the uh, sympathetic nervous system. But we want to be in the parasympathetic nervous system where we're more peaceful, calm, and relaxed. And some people are so in the habit of being in fight or flight all the time that they are feeling nervous and jittery. And there are ways that we can help to enhance feeling more peaceful, calm, and relaxed. So I have a question for you. How are you doing with that? Are you feeling nervous and agitated? 
or are you able to pull yourself back and feel peaceful, calm, and relaxed? We can intentionally slow down our respiratory rate, slow down our breathing, and we can do that for a moment together. And I encourage you to do this throughout the day. You can do the box or square breath where we breathe in and then pause. That's the top part of the breath and breathe out through your mouth. That's the side and then pause again. That's the bottom part of the, the square. Again, big breath in and hold it for as long as you can and then breathe out. That makes the side and then pause for as long as you can. We'll do that one more time. Breathing in and pause for as long as you can and breathe out and then pause. This is a very powerful um, skill to remember throughout the day. So I encourage you to just be aware. Are you in fight or flight? And if you are, see if you can take out that that breathing technique throughout the day where you can help yourself get out of fight or flight and get more in rest and digest. Also, we've talked about so many times that we have so many layers that make us up physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. We have four layers that make us up. So let's do a check for a moment. And asking yourself questions really helps us to be in our prefrontal cortex, that very front part of our brain where, where we are observing our process. So for a moment, ask yourself these questions. How are you doing physically? Is there anything that you're needing to shift physically? How well are you sleeping at night? Are you taking in enough water? Are you um, eating enough protein? Are you getting enough exercise or anything else? Are there any substances maybe you need to lay down? But physically, you know, we all have room to grow. What is it that you may need to do to help to enhance your physical body? And then emotionally, how are you doing emotionally? What are the dominant emotions that you've been feeling? And how is it that you may need to regulate those emotions where you may just need to simply shift your breath or you may need to shift your perspective, the way that you're seeing things. And then mentally, what's happening with your thought life, your interior life? Are there ways that you can start taking a pause from time to time and really looking at how it is that you can count the blessings in your life? And then S, how are you doing spiritually? What is it that you may need to do to amp it up a little bit and spend more time with the Lord or read his uh, basic instructions before leaving earth, otherwise known as the Bible, or connect with the body of Christ? You know, he's given us a threefold path. First, the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us is right here, right now with us. And all we need to do is to call him right into our heart. That's the first part of the threefold path. The second part of the threefold path is the Bible, where we just read his word or devotionals about how he has encouraged us to live life on this planet. And then the third part of the third part of the threefold path is the church people, the body of Christ, where we connect with fellow believers, where they can pour into us and we can pour into them. So those are the uh, things that we need to focus on, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. We also want to be aware of what our number is. As we're checking out um, how we're feeling, just like when we go to the doctor and uh, he takes our blood pressure or listens to our heart, these are the things that we can do for ourselves. Be aware of where you are on that zero to 10 scale where 10 is the best you've ever felt in your life and zero is the worst. What number are you right now? And what number would you like to be? And then the opposite of that, the standard unit of uh, deviation or disturbance where uh, 10 is really intense disturbance and zero is complete inner peace. What number are you at now? And what number would you like to be? Are there any emotions that you may need to regulate? And how might you be able to do that? And then we can go over the skill set of DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, and there's four categories with that. Again, if you stay with me, 
um, it's just such a wonderful practice to look at how well you're doing. Again, mindful. Are you aware of your process? As you can be aware of your process, as you can be aware of what's happening internally, you're literally increasing your emotional IQ. And then we can look at again, are there any emotions that we're needing to regulate for emotional regulation? And then how about your distress? What is your distress level? The third aspect of dialectical behavioral therapy is distress. Uh, tolerance and we want to look at what are some ways that we can tolerate our distress and uh, we'll be going over uh, a distress tolerance skill today from dialectical behavioral therapy DBT for short called vitals so stay with me and we'll go over that and then the fourth part of DBT is effective communication how is your communication lately do you need to take a step back, breathe, pause, pray, invite the Lord into your heart, into all of your circumstances? How is it that you may be able to be kind and increase your compassion and empathy for others before you even speak? So these are some of the things um, that are really important for us to focus on. When we talk about vital signs, we're also checking our own vital signs in how it is that we're being. As we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. How are we taking care of all the layers that make us up? So let's uh, go over uh, vitals, which is, again, a DBT skill, um, focusing mainly on distress tolerance. Anybody have any distress in their life? I know from time to time I certainly do. And it's a really good idea to think about how you can help to decrease the distress in your life. I love that it's phrased that way because there may just be circumstances that are going on if we're taking care of an ill child or an elderly parent or there's certain circumstances that are going on in our life that it's just going to be that way but we can literally decrease our distress as we handle all of our life circumstances. Remember it's in the hard times that we grow the fruit of the spirit the most. And the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Okay, are you ready? You may wanna take out your notebook and jot some of this stuff down. So we're going to go over VITALS. So VITALS is the acronym, and V stands for validate your feelings. Very often we go through our life and we don't take the time to think about what we're even feeling. So this is an invitation to become aware, be aware of your process and just ask yourself, what are you feeling? Let's take a moment and just think about what are the emotions that you're feeling? When I work with clients, particularly the little kids, I will offer them these feelings and I'll ask them to tell me, are they feeling happy? Are they feeling sad? Are they feeling angry? Are they feeling scared? So those are the four basic emotions. And then we certainly have more emotions that we can focus on, but just see if you can become aware. Maybe you can become aware of two or three emotions that you're feeling right now, because we truly can feel more than one emotion at a time. So be aware of what the emotion is. That's the first step of the V for vitals. And the second step is then to validate why you're feeling that way. You know, start to have really positive self-talk. It's okay to talk to yourself and you can just say, hey, you know, so-and-so, I understand that you're feeling scared about this or that you're feeling sad about this because of this particular situation. But it's just a way to increase your awareness with what it is that you're feeling. Very often, if we're not aware of what we're feeling, we'll push it down. We'll keep pushing it down, pushing it all down, and then before you know it, it explodes. So it's really important to take these little breaks from time to time and allow yourself to become aware of what it is that you're feeling and then validate why it is that you're feeling what you're feeling. Okay, so that's V. Then the next step in vitals is I, Use your imagination, eye for imagination, and really begin to imagine your circumstances in your life. And as you go about your circumstances, start to imagine 
going about your circumstances peacefully and productively. Again, if you have that ill child or that elderly parent or whatever the circumstances are that you're finding a struggle in your life, start to imagine that you're more happy, that you're more peaceful, that you are more productive as you go around all the tasks that are required of you. <clears throat> the T in vitals is take small steps. Now, I know that I can certainly get overwhelmed if I have a lot to do on my to-do list, but if I can take those steps and break them down into little bite-sized pieces and do a little bit now and then a little bit later and then a little bit later on, it can make us feel so much more peaceful. We can get out of that fight or flight and just say, okay, just going to do three things right now. And then in an hour, I'm going to do another three things. And then an hour, I'm going to do another three things and so on. But find ways to take very small steps and to break it down so that it's not so overwhelming. The A in vitals is to applaud yourself. It's really important to acknowledge how hard you're working. So whatever you're going through in life right now, whatever steps you're taking, take a moment to, again, be a cheerleader to yourself and really acknowledge and applaud yourself. Hey, good job. I'm really impressed. Look at how far you've come. Look at how far you've come from six months, a year ago, three years ago, five years ago, and so on. But it's really important that we learn how to develop a really good relationship with ourselves. I will often tell clients, and they're always amazed by this, and it's so, it's so obvious, but yet it's something we don't think about, that guess what? You are going to be with you for the rest of your life, no matter where you go, no matter what you do. You may as well become a really good friend to yourself, right? Start right now becoming a really good friend to yourself and start to acknowledge, start to have compassion and empathy for all that you're experiencing. It will help you to feel so much better. And the L in vitals is to lighten your load. See how it is that you can lighten your load. Is there any way that you can delegate any of those responsibilities that you have? Um, if not, we can take out that A plus B equals C tool from Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. A is the event, B is our perception of the event, and C is our experience. So we may not be able to change A, the event, but we can always, always, always change our perspective. So look how it might be that you truly can change your perspective and see things the way the Lord would see things and not how um, we might feel if our number is lower. So really practice that. It will help you to feel so much better. <clears throat> and then S, for sweeten the pot. I love that, you know, just thinking about sweetening the pot is an expression that once we're done doing all that we need to do, make sure that you're rewarding yourself. So that's sweetening the pot, making sure that you're rewarding yourself. But I really recommend that you don't reward yourself with food or alcohol or substances, but rather reward yourself with a non-food item, such as reading a really good novel or watching a really good show, or maybe doing a craft, or something that you really love to do, and allow yourself to maybe even take a nap, but reward yourself with a non-food, uh, non-alcohol, non-substance item, so that you can really enjoy the experience. So that's Vitals, and let's go a little bit further into what the Lord has to say about how it is that we can enhance our life. Remember that we're on a journey. From the moment we're born until the moment we lay down our head and take our last breath, we are truly on a journey. And everything in life is helping to shape and mold us and to help us to become a better version of ourselves. And when we can invite our wonderful Lord into all of our circumstances, remember that our wonderful Lord Jesus died for our sins. He died for my sins and he died for your sins. So put anything that you regret, any mistakes that you've made, put it right at the foot of the cross and instead exchange it for his grace, his mercy, 
and peace and invite him into your heart throughout your journey. Maybe there's some experiences that you've had to let go of and close some doors and close some chapters. And maybe now you're in a new chapter of your life. But remember, while you're on this journey, the Lord is with you every moment of every hour of every day. And that can certainly help you to feel so much better. So we'll start off with Proverbs 3, 5, 6, where it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I love this reminder so much, particularly as I focus on the fact that I truly am on a journey. And sometimes we go this way and that way and this way and that way. But if we rely on him, he truly can make our path straight and we can move forward. And that can save us so much time and help us to feel so much better. <clears throat> In Luke eleven twenty eight, 28, it says, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. So we not are only asked to hear the word of God or read the word of God, but we're asked to apply the word of God into all of our circumstances. In James 1, 12, it says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Amen. Now, I know that life can be a bit challenging at times, but if we can persevere and we can stay steadfast and remember that we're doing all of this for our wonderful Lord, he will reward us and it will help us to feel so much better. In Colossians 3.23, it says, Whatever you do, work as if you are working with your whole heart. Work as if you're working for the Lord and not for your human masters. So rise above all your circumstances and remember that everything that you're doing, everything that you're not doing is for our wonderful Lord. I had this dream last night, which was a little disturbing. Um, years ago, I worked in the hospital in intensive care. And in my dream last night, I was back in intensive care. And I haven't done this in, I don't know, a very long time, probably like, you know, about 20 years or so. And in my dream, I was back in ICU and I was thinking, how am I going to take care of these patients? I haven't done this in so long. And in the middle of my dream, I took a moment, I took a step back, I, I breathed, I paused and I prayed and I said, Lord, you have to help me with this. I can't do this all by myself. And then before you know it, the circumstances of the dream changed and the people that I was with uh, were taking care of the patients and it all worked out really well. And I, I just kind of chuckled when I woke up in the morning, just reminding me that not only as we go through our life, every moment of every hour of every day, you truly can invite the Lord into your heart and ask him to help you with all of your circumstances. Even during the night while you're having a dream, you can invite him into your dream and ask him to help you with all of your circumstances. In Isaiah 40, 31, it says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. As we lean on the Lord, he indeed is going to renew our strength because he loves us that much. He wants us to rely on him. He does not want us to do all these things by ourselves. He wants to enhance us, help us, shape us, mold us, and use us in all of our circumstances. We're never alone. He wants to partner with us through all that we're experiencing in life. In John uh, 10, 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it to the full. Amen. So if you're feeling negative about your circumstances, I encourage you to do this and push the enemy away and say, no, thank you. I'm not interested in hearing what it is that you're telling me. Because just as the Lord wants to be there for us, the enemy comes knocking and may want to knock us off our faith. So if you're feeling negative in your circumstances, push the enemy away and invite the Lord into 
your heart because he loves you that much. In John 6, 35, it says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So just remember, it's that simple. Invite our wonderful Lord into your heart and he absolutely will fill you from the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet and help you in all of your circumstances. In Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. So no matter how hard your circumstances are right now, I really encourage you through your quiet time this week, this week through your uh, self-reflection um, journal time, I encourage you to invite the Lord into your heart and all of your circumstances. He is so ready, willing, and able to help you through all of your circumstances. He truly wants to help you feel better and help you to grow all the fruit of your spirit as you go through all of your experiences. Will you join me in that this week? It will help you to feel so much better. In Romans 8, 28, it says, all things work together for good for those that love him and are called to his purpose. Amen. And sometimes it's really nice to think about that, that no matter what you're going through in your life, no matter how hard it may be, all these things are working together for good for those that love him and are called to his purpose. And we may not be able to see it right in the moment, but we certainly will see it later on as we look back. And in 1 John 5, 12, it says, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. And it's so simple. If you want a relationship with the Lord, first, it's easy as ABC. First, admit that you're a sinner. <clears throat> Get in touch with what you've sinned with and about the mistakes that you've made, the ways that you've derailed. A, admit that you're a sinner and repent of those sins and put it right at the foot of the cross. And then B, believe that our wonderful Lord Jesus died for your sins and my sins. Believe that he did all of this because he loves us that much. And then C, admit that your life and commit your life to Christ. When we commit our life to Christ, we invite him into all of our circumstances and our life becomes that much easier, that much more meaningful, that much more purposeful, and we can get in touch with the true meaning of why it is that we're living life. And we'll end with Proverbs twenty-one twenty-one, where it says, Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. And just remember that when we do the right thing, when we commit our life to Christ, he gives us life. He gives us prosperity. He gives us honor in all of our circumstances. So I encourage you this week, again, in your quiet time, in your self-reflection time, in your journal time, focus on some of the things we've talked about today. Focus on your vital signs. How are your, how are your vital signs doing? And <clears throat> what might be the ways that you can incorporate this um, distress tolerance skill from DBT, vitals, into your life? First, the V for validating your emotions. Then I, Imagine doing things more peacefully and productively. Then T, take small steps, break it down into bite-sized pieces so it makes it so much easier to handle all your circumstances. Then A, applaud yourself, acknowledge yourself, become a really good friend to yourself in the ways that you're living your life. And then L, lighten the load. If you're not able to delegate some of the things that you need to do, See if there's ways that you can shift your perspective and see things from a completely different perspective to lighten your load. And then S, sweeten the pot. Reward yourself with a non-food, non-substance, non-alcoholic beverage 
and reward yourself with some things that you enjoy doing and you will feel so much better. I hope that this message was helpful for you today. I am praying for you every single day and I ask that you please pray for me too. I would love to hear from you if you have any comments or questions or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper. I am a clinical pastoral counselor, a nurse, a life coach, and a therapist. Um, you can reach out to me on my website. That's toolsforliving.net. That's tools for the number four, living.net. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.